I'd say before I met Guruji, um, my life was uh, a bit hectic. <laughs> like, I feel like I was always looking for something in the future to satisfy um, something, but I didn't know what. Like, something had a deeper urge. Like, I knew there was something more to life, but I think for me, I thought if I accomplished something, maybe I would find it. So there was a lot of seeking to accomplish things in art or um, in relationships or uh, traveling. Um, so there, there was a lot of seeking, but always with a sense of like, I need to do something. Um, and before I'm actually, so I met Siddhartha, my husband, and uh, I could sense he was also looking for something much deeper in life. So that's what really drew me to him. But I also had this sense, I don't want to be in a relationship. They're messy. But somehow, like, I felt like God was just kept bringing me in, like, into contact with him. And then he was watching satsangs with Guruji, and he asked me to do a retreat with him. And I was a bit weary, just like, I don't really know what this is, and it seems complicated. And then we did our first retreat online, and everything just, I just remember, like, everything shifted really quickly. Like, there were a lot of things I thought were problems in my life, and I immediately, like, I just remember sitting after the retreat and seeing that all of that was just like an approach I was taking of situations that were arising. So it felt like a lot of space was just opening up um, and at the same time being challenged as well, like the sense of who I am, like everything was just kind of falling away. Um, yeah, and I could go more into like the linear timeline of then to meeting Guruji, but I would say in the past few years since meeting him, there's just so much more freedom and naturalness and less fear. And I used to feel like I always, always trying to make a decision about what to do next or what. And that's just like gone. And you know, they're superficial decisions. They come, it's natural, but there's no, I don't know, there's no heaviness in the same way. Um, and I feel like there, I remember there was a time too, where a lot of emotions were coming for me in my life. Like the year before I met Guruji, like, sense of fear and I found myself crying a lot because I had this question, am I on the right path? What am I supposed to be doing? And now I feel like almost every day I'm just thanking God, <laughs> like, thank you for this life. Like, thank you. Thank you for this family. Thank you for taking care of me. And, and I still get challenged, of course, um, by situations maybe, but they're worked through very quickly and there's even a gratitude for that. Um, so the one who I would say used to be in this sense of trying to find something, I don't really feel that anymore. And there's more this just quiet joy. And um, there's still a lot that happens. Like I feel like we have a quite a dynamic life here, but it's so rich. And I didn't know this what I was looking for, but it's almost like God just brought it to me. I feel with Guruji, there's not so much focus on doing anything to get anywhere. You know, of course, he recommends that we take time to just sit and be, um, but it's not to sit and be, to then be healed, to get somewhere. It's more like recognize that which is already perfect in you. Um, and that it's always been here. <laughs> and nothing that you've done or that's happened to you or that you will do can affect that. You know, and it doesn't mean that you disregard the way you are or that you shouldn't be kind and um, true, but it's the more you recognize this state, I think, the more, I think he says like it blesses every aspect of your being. So when you're at peace, I think with yourself, then how could you not move more in harmony with everything? I find, I found for me, the more I thought like there was some inner conflict, then I'd be seeing a lot of conflict outside and perceiving it, manifesting it. Um, so it's almost like in this self-recognition that there is just a great healing. I see this a lot with, uh, with Guruji, that there's just like this, people come and they actually see how simple it is to drop all this baggage that you're carrying and all these heavy ideas. And uh, I'm definitely not saying that there's like 
the spirit, all their spiritual practices out there, um, don't have some kind of value or that they're not worth following. Um, but for me, I've just found that this is the most direct and, uh, I don't know. There's not like a step, like do these things. And then this, you know, it's just, uh, it's, yeah, it's more, and it, the more I feel like I've listened to satsang because that wasn't even like listening to satsang is a practice. It's more like your heart is just so thirsty to hear these words that just remind you and bring you back into this place of just, it's not even joy. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to describe. It's just a uh, presence and, um, stillness and a lot of the noise of the world that you can get really involved in you just see how it's just I don't know doesn't have so much pull It's funny, like, I didn't think that um, love in this way was really possible until I met Guruji because uh, it's a love that's always, like I've heard Guruji say, true love is always working to set you free. And I do feel like that's at the heart for me and Siddhartha, and not just for me and Siddhartha, but like my relationships with my team, who you're very close with, you're with every single day and you push each other's buttons and you but it's oh it's always for a higher you can always use it in the higher um the highest way to just drop something or to see like where am i like holding on to a bit of a stinky energy or a person or like a, a shape you know um where where am i maybe being a bit selfish or just not being true um but i feel like since being in sat sung together like i i don't know if we would like my relationship with Siddhartha would actually be alive if I hadn't met Guruji because um, yeah I, f I feel like what I was saying before is like there was something more um, addicted to drama and to seeing things as problems so when you're in that state it's really hard to <laughs> evolve and grow or love in the truest way um, whereas being in satsang which just helps you to see what's true and also not take things so seriously <laughs> and to be quite playful which i've heard guruji say sometimes to some people like remember to have fun <laughs> you know like it's very easy to start to be like this means this and you know like love should be this way and you said you would never <laughs> you know like you meant to die for me <laughs> like just like and it's like whoa <laughs> where is that coming from like i think we pick it up in movies and cultural conditioning but uh a lot of those ideas just really dropped and uh, of course Siddhartha still challenges me I wouldn't have it any other way because I know it's coming from a truer way like I find it in the team too like if I'm not moving in a way that's true someone will point it out and again that's the highest form of love I feel which I also find with Guruji he can be quite strong and, you know sometimes people use the word ruthless but it's it's like the highest love because he wants to see us free and not complacent. First of all, I feel really grateful <laughs> to work with Saja Express um, because you found something that, I found something that has just been such an immense um, saving grace in my life that to then be working with material to share with people that can you know like when I go home I also like to watch the videos and it's like if you start indulging something that's not true and you just put on one of those videos I feel like in a minute it's just like I don't know it has no space um, and the team is really amazing like we just have a beautiful I don't know, like, we're called Happy House Productions, <laughs> and maybe it sounds a little cliche, but it's really true. It's a really happy little house, very cozy. Um, yeah, and Muji's always in satsang, like, his life is for this, so we're getting material all the time, and sometimes it's a bit of, like, trying to keep up with it is also, I don't know, it's a joy, and it's also, like, not even totally possible because it's just so rich and there's so much, um, 
if I watch a video from a few years ago, sometimes I do this and I'm, I'm like, wow, this is so current. <laughs> like it feels, it's very timeless. Um, but I feel like he's always using right now, like our current life to reflect on the truth. So he, something may have happened within the Sangha or with his own life or an experience and exchange that he had someone. And then he'll use that to really highlight what the truth is and how to transcend the mind and how to use what's coming up for someone. So I feel like that's how it can change. Um, and sometimes he will give us different practices, you know, to really eye watching was a really big one. I mean, I feel like he's always been guiding to that, but his way of speaking about it to really watch who is this one, this I that is engaging with everything and to come back to this like before, before you um, engage with the world. Also to not take any shape. That's been like a really beautiful one, uh, which means like don't take a form or an idea of who you are. Um, like there's a joke that he's been saying a lot, like shape happens, like <laughs> she said this, which I think we know what that's going to do. And uh, there's like, so there's playful things that he'll use. And, um, but I would say that's maybe something more current, which I feel like a few years back, he was also speaking about it, but in, in a different way, like different, different metaphors. And the language is always evolving because consciousness is always evolving and how it wants to speak to us. Um, but yeah, it's very timeless. To use my life in the highest way, I would, I would say, like, because we don't know when we're going to be out of this body that, and, and it doesn't mean that it, like, I'm always like, need to be using my, my time well needs, you know, but it's more like, uh, where's my attention at, you know, like where, where am I putting my focus and, you know, like, where's God in this situation? <laughs> where's he not? <laughs> But I remember something after the first retreat I did with Guruji um, in physical form. I think I was saying thank you to him. And he said, like, what is the highest way someone could thank me would be to not fall back, you know, to not fall back into delusion or this sense. And so, um, and he speaks about Papaji sometimes being vigilant. So I guess it's, for me, what's important is to not fall into sleep. <laughs> I mean, I guess the great contemplation with that is that you really just leave everything, you know. So the future doesn't mean anything, and also neither does the past. I really love Guruji's quote that is like, if this was the last day in your body, you know, would the chatter of your mind mean anything to you? Um, that keeps you really awake and fresh. <laughs> yeah, I do, but I feel like they're not... They're very light, like they're, I, you know, sometimes I want to drink a really good cup of tea or spend a little bit of time with my mom or um, play football on Sunday. <laughs> I don't know, like there's nothing, there's, I don't feel like I have a desire that needs to fill something to be happy. You know, it's more like, Sometimes Guruji says, when you're hungry, you eat, you know, like there's those natural ones. Maybe every now and then something might show up where it's like, oh, I'd really like that, you know, or this might, you know, and then you can see like, well, what are you trying to get out of that? And, you know, or you have that feeling and then you do it and you realize like, yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> um, there's nothing I can say so strongly. Like, uh, again, like, being with Guruji, there's just this really deep sense of completeness in your life that he keeps on pointing to and you can't not see it um, and experience it, <laughs> be it. <laughs> Everything I was looking for, I found is actually just here in myself and it's not masked as something external. <laughs>